He's going coast to coast. Clear the runway. He's coming in. It's a helicopter slam jam. He's going to pull up from three. Count. Watch this guy go. Triple drive, backs it in, and gets it. Welcome back live inside the Centerplex here in Macon, Georgia for this girls' Class 3A championship game. And oh, another good one on tap for this one. The Morgan County Bulldogs coming in from Region A to 27-3 and undefeated within their region. Also unblemished in their region is Jackson Atlanta. The Jaguars coming in as well, 30-1 and one out of Region 4A. So glad you're here with us. Larry Smith here for the former Naismith winner, Keisha Brown. Great to have you along again. We've been talking about this all week long, this matchup, and the guard play we're going to see two teams that really kind of mirror each other well and, and they're, they're gonna have to understand that they're gonna be guarding each other for 32 <laughs> minutes and that's gonna be the challenge you know your hardest challenge is always being able to defend yourself play against yourself see yourself in a mirror well these two teams are gonna have exactly that how they're going to be able to combat each other with each other that remains to be seen absolutely Morgan County we mentioned again 27 and 3 on the season they are led by their star guards one of them is uh, someone watching for Tatiana Davis and what an outstanding player she is for the Bulldogs. I mean, just be careful because she's a lefty, first of all, so they, they carry a uniqueness to himself. Averaging 19 points a game, five rebounds and four assists. She can score in bunches. Be careful of her. And she has had a great season, almost 20 points per game. You can see there, and as you said, she is quite a load. Looks like a prototypical college basketball player is what her coach uh, was saying, Joshua Reese. On the other side for uh, Atlanta, Jackson Atlanta, they have never uh, been and won a playoff game before this year. They were 0-8. They're two star players right now the seniors leading the way for the Lady Jags and they're trying to create their own story you know we've talked to the coach she's she's, she's given us the, the story of what they've gone through this year going out of the state to challenge themselves and, and they've come back with the chip of their shoulders they want to be good they want to be able to compete against themselves and be one of the high upper echelon teams in the state of Georgia Michelle Powell is the head coach there for the sixth season taking over on the team formerly known as Southside High School now it is Maynard Jackson High School the third member of our broadcast team for this game is Jackie Britton who has more hey Jackie Thanks, guys. Yeah, you know, both of these teams have been humbled by out-of-state tournament play. Morgan County was on a great roll at the beginning of the season. They were on a three-game winning streak until they found themselves on a three-game losing streak when they traveled to Ohio to face some teams out there. But they haven't lost since they've been back in the state of Georgia, winning 24 straight. The similar situation for the Lady Jaguars, who were playing in a tournament in Tennessee. And Coach said that they faced a D.C. team. And after that, they vowed to never have that feeling ever again. Here they both are on the biggest stage of the season. Okay, Jackie, thanks so much. So Morgan County, the Bulldogs, again, 27-3 out of Region 8. Here is their region's starting lineup. We talked about the two-star guards, Alexis Brown, her brother, Tukey Brown, you may recall. He is the all-time leading scorer in Morgan County history. And uh, she, you can see that the basketball lineage is strong in the Brown family. Davis against Sydney Nash, Delia Adams, and Jeteria Bryant at center. Senior lineup, we'll talk more about them in just a moment. They are led by, again, their head coach, Joshua Reeves. And what a story for him we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, what are your keys to a Bulldogs or to a victory right now for the Bulldogs? Well, today for Morgan County, they're going to have to be able to defend and rebound and do it with the best because they're going to get out. If you can defend and rebound the basketball, you can get out and run. Handle the aggressive nature that Maynard Jackson is going to be put, putting out today. And the big players, you have to play big today. Alexis Brown, Tatiana Davis, this is your stage. Absolutely. That's the Morgan County story. On the other side, again, it's uh, Jackson out of Atlanta. The Jaguars 30 and 1. We mentioned 0 and 8 all time in postseason before this year. Their region's starting five is Erica Gibson and Kinesis Mayfield, as we saw there. Walker again, we saw a moment ago, Kayla Thomas, and, and then that's uh, Tierra Smith uh, as well there for the starters. For Michelle Powell, and what a great story uh, she is uh, uh, for this uh, Jaguars team. And uh, just her passion for these young ladies, not just in basketball, all, but even off the court. Yeah, and I, and I love that. You know, a lot of people think that you just coach basketball, but in actuality, you're coaching life skills, and you get to do that through the forum of, of basketball. And, and she has taken on that challenge of being that mother role, that auntie role, and wanting to see these young ladies grow up to be great, outstanding women. How about their keys to the game, Keisha? Well, you know, it's funny because the keys to the game is to be able to defend yourself. If you can defend yourself in the best way possible, you're going to be able to win. Understand your role. Kinesis is a great rebounder. She loves to rebound. She's going to be able to do her role rebounding. And then, obviously, Kamisha Walker, she's going to be able to score. Make your dream a reality. They have written this storyline all the way out, and they want to finish it in Orlando. 
Yeah, Coach Powell called this uh, playoff run the hardest five games we have ever played. She said, <laughs> hey, there are no okie doke teams. This is a challenge. If you girls thought this was going to be easy, these are all champions. And here we go, Jackson and White trimmed in maroon. We've got uh, Morgan County in the dark gray trimmed in red. Your officials for this game, Roy Lee Honeycutt, Vinnie Rush, and Simone Red. And we tip it off for the third game here in this final day of competition here in Macon. It is Jackson with the opening tip. And starting things off, we're off and running right now. That is Smith with the shot from the outside. Won't go. Big rebound there by Bryant. And very quickly, that's a jump ball. Good hands inside there by Jackson. And on the arrow, it'll go to Morgan County. You know, Coach talked about, you know, it's, a, it's another statement when you say, let's get shots up. They shoot in high volume. So just look for Jackson just to get out and get some shots up quickly. You may not see too much of a half-court offense out of him. Right, right, good hands, and that's a strip right there. Going all the way in for the bucket, and oh, too hard off the backboard, but back up and in is good. That's Erica Gibbons with the putback. Kamisha Walker there with the shot that didn't go. Smith was the one who forced a turnover. Quickly back the other way now. It's Morgan County up and won't get it to go, but it's Tatiana Davis who go to the line, and she'll shoot a pair. So some fast action right here. We can see already Jackson trying to force the issue with the three-quarter court press. It paid off there on the first basket, and again, very quickly, it's up to Morgan County to try to counter that and make things happen. And the best way to counter that is just to pass over the press. You get somebody leak long, Tatiana Davis did a good job of staying away from the ball. Ball finds her, and she's at the free throw line. Good look here at Tatiana Davis. You see her numbers, four and a half rebounds a game, 3.6 assists. Just a junior, one of the stars of this team. She misses both. Jackson the rebound. Walker up court, looking into the corner now, and that's a travel. Tyranny Smith got a little excited there. <laughs> got the ball, stepped into her shot, but she got a dribble. You can't pick up both feet after Tinker picking up. Feet. <laughs> that's right. Uh, breaking the press here, got to get it across, and they're call over and back. It looked like maybe her foot was on the line, but they're saying no, over and back right there. A little bit of nerves, a little bit of anxiety right now for both squads. You know, and, and it's even heightened even more because you want to get out and run. You're not necessarily a half-court team. You want to get out and run. So that adrenaline is just going just a little bit more. Smith off the backboard too hard. No. Rebound by Sidney Nash to Davis for three. That's good. They've got a two-pointer. Tatiana Davis and a steal. Nash gets the rebound, back up off the board, and no! Morgan County again can't get that to go. Jackson the rebound. Here comes Walker. Doesn't have numbers, stops, pops from way outside. Bryant, big rebound underneath. Lexus Brown getting hit there in the face, and a foul is called very quickly on Jackson. A little too aggressive there. Take one more look at this. She's way aggressive from the rebound. She wants to steal, but just ends up getting the back of her head a little bit. Foul there on Walker. And that's her first. No press this time. And here comes Smith to force the action. Number 24, near steal here at midcourt, right in front of our vantage point. Lefty for the three-pointer. That's an air ball from Davis. Here comes Jackson in the way. Kamisha Walker, she'll stop from 15. That's wide. And it goes back over now to the Bulldogs. You just got to settle down a little bit. We've only played a minute and 58 seconds right now. Understand what you have. Use the press to your advantage. Get in the passing lanes. Get some easy buckets for you. Not so hard early on. It's just again, there's a steal again in the front court. Another steal. Oh, and she blew the layup. Kamisha Walker didn't quite measure that one quite enough off the backboard. Wish she had that one back. She might have just been a little bit too relaxed on that one. <laughs> she saw she had a fast break by herself. <laughs> now you got to get the exertion to get it up on the backboard. That's right. Nice play there. The inbounds. We can't get it to go. Erica Gibbons there trying with the catch and shoot in all one motion. Jackson already one of eight shooting. And as you mentioned, a bit of nerves here on both sides. We open this. Last 3A girls championship matchup. Nash. Cross court now to Davis. Inside for Bryant. On the move. Lefty hook is short. Loose ball to Nash. She shoots. That's off the back iron. Nash again, but she's blocked by Gibbons, and it'll stay on this end. Bulldogs ball. 
Substitution now in the game. That's number 24. Autumn Woodard, the junior, coming in. And she replaces Talia Adams, who will take a seat. If you look at Erica Gibbons' body frame, she is the best shot blocker that they have on the team. So just look for her to always be around the ball, maybe on a help side defense, getting some offside blocks. Quick shot there. That won't go. Miss by Davis. Back up and in is the basket. Mads, I believe, has three offensive rebounds already by, <laughs> with his team. She's creating those extra possessions. The blocking foul there called on Morgan County. We'll see who that foul goes on. Another substitution here. That's Selena Fortune coming in the game. And Bryant going out. Last bucket here by Nash. She's all over the place, as you mentioned. <laughs> she has those offensive a, rebound stats right. in one possession. She, she's the motor of this team. She's a heartbeat of this team. So you can expect her to play a lot of big minutes today in this game. The coach said she'll make shots or make you ask. How does she do that? She's averaging nine rebounds a game, so wow. she's got three of them on the offensive end. Mayfield now, it's Thomas with the ball. Back in the corner now, three-point shot up and high is off the mark. Rebound there by Mayfield, but bouncing off her toe. Walker there on the missed three-pointer is again. Jackson struggling with the shooting right now. Nash clears, gets it through the press. And good defense there. Walker tips it from behind, goes off. Nash is the call. Another substitution now. It's number 12, Brittany Belzer, the senior, coming in. And Nash will take a seat. So Coach Joshua Reeves, very busy now. Liberal substitution early on. And now we see Morgan County in a press. Both nope. of these teams are going to use their bench. You can see a lot of, you can see a lot of turnaround going around the substitution table today. Great job there by Erica Gibbons. Nice look by Kayla Thomas with the assist. Tied up with four again. Again, the press, as you mentioned, uses a lot of energy, so you got to go deep in your bench to keep, keep everyone fresh. Great shot there from 50 feet. Tatiana Davis, that lefty shot. 6-4, Morgan County on top. Jump ball. Great defense. Great defense established great by job. Autumn Water. Yeah, Autumn Water, great job there to tie up Gibbons. We've got a timeout on the court. And let's check and make sure we're staying live action. And there we go. Timeout will take one as well. 6-4, Bulldogs on top. Like video games is all about getting to the next level. Mastering skills, gaining knowledge, and setting goals are crucial to success in both. Coming out of high school and jumping into manufacturing, I started here on the floor hands-on. and I just worked really hard and tried to learn everything that I could, and I advanced pretty quickly. I think there's definitely a place for women in manufacturing. Georgia Department of Education's Career Pathway courses give you the chance to power up your future. More information is at georgiasfutureworkforce.org. 409 here in the first quarter, Morgan County leading Jackson Atlanta 6-4 here as we uh, continue on the Class 3A Championship Girls game. Let's take a look at how these two teams got here, the road to the championship. Very similar, both teams uh, going out of state during the holidays. It took their lumps, but they really grew from that. Jackson Atlanta, first off, uh, very easy uh, opener against Tattano County. Tougher matchup against Hart County, West Hall Beach, and then today against Morgan County. That's how the Jaguars 30 and 1 got here. As for the Bulldogs, uh, easy start Rockmark, Westminster, Laney was a team that they beat earlier in the years. They beat them twice. Laney was number one in 3A back when they beat them uh, earlier in the season. Knocked off Johnson in the semifinals, and now here they are today trying to close out uh, their only their second state championship. They won their first one back in 1983. Hey, Jackie, what else do you have for us? Thanks, guys. Yeah, you'll notice on the back of the T-shirts of the girls of Morgan County High School wearing the number 71, as I have it here. I was speaking with a student, Artelia Butler, and she was telling me the story of Seth Stapleton, a defensive lineman on their football team who was killed in a car accident back in November when football season was still going on, she believes. And so they're wearing that number tonight to honor their friend, their teammate, and their student at Morgan County High School. Okay, Jackie, what a great tribute there. And I know the girls were so passionate uh, telling uh, his story to us earlier today here before the game. And off to a quick start here, the 6-4. Big defensive uh, matchup so far in this Class 3A game. Inside, that's a travel in the lane. Erica Gibbons trying to make things happen. Both teams struggling shooting early on. Jackson, 2 for 9 from the field. Morgan County, 3 of 11. 
And no press this time. The Bulldogs bring the ball up pretty easily. A little different wrinkle here. Getting over to Davis for three. Off the front iron short. But there's the big rebound by Fortune. Up and in. Great shot right there. Autumn Woodard on the basket. 8-4 lead. The biggest for either team. Nice runner there. Gets it to go. That's Tierney Smith. She's got that floater that you don't see a lot of, uh, in women's basketball. But she likes to use that a lot. That is one of her go-to moves. Davis the other way. Very quickly back up and in as we talk about the athleticism of Davis. Tatiana Davis on the board again. Morgan County back out to a four-point lead. Talking defense there. Brittany Belzer all over Tyranny Smith. Now working inside. Shot is partially blocked and it'll stay Jackson ball. Substitution out for Jackson. Number three, Tamara White coming in. She replaces Tyranny Smith there at the point. White just a sophomore. See Shantavius Arnold also in the game. Shooting guard, she's a senior. That's Thomas on the miss. Morgan the other way. This is Davis going all the way in. Gets that to go, and she's fouled. Kess for a three-point play. Tatiana Davis in control here in the first quarter, Keisha. I, I think we're playing at home at Morgan County right now. I'm not sure. This crowd is just all a sea of red and white. She's taking her jets are on. She takes that contact, and she scores that end one. One of the big things about Morgan County is are they going to be able to handle the aggressiveness that Jackson is displaying? They're doing a great job of it right now. And Tatiana Davis averages almost 20 points per game, already eight points here in this first quarter. And, you know, Coach was saying she turns it on. When she gets hot and really dials in, says she can score double digits in a quarter. And we're seeing that right now. Nine points now to Tatiana Davis. And very quickly, it's a 13-6 lead as she takes a breather after making the free throw. Replaced by Alexis Brown, the other star player. Pumpkin, they call it. 9-2 Morgan run. Leading now by seven. Jaguars trying to answer. In the paint, the turnaround, nothing doing. Good defense, great pass inside. A great extra look. She saw, she knew she didn't have that spin move the way she wanted it. A great slashing play by Erica Gibbons gets the easy two. Gibbons on the score, give the assist there to Kayla Thomas. And to your point, what great presence of mind. Let's one more look at this right here, watch this. Right, you get team, great defense by Woodard, and then you get that slash and play at the end. You, you got an outlet for you, easy two, back, um, two points. If you've got a double team, you know somebody somewhere has to be open. Great vision by her, and we've got a foul now called on the Jaguars. That's on Arnold, Shantavius Arnold. That's her first coming off the bench. 2.30 to go here in a very spirited first quarter. Class 3A game, the third of our six games today. And a quick substitution. Uh, Nash coming back in. Not sure if we've got some blood there. It was drawn. Uh, Santaji Reed in the game. I'm sure how that looked at. Morgan County ball. Nash back over to Fortune. And we're going the other way. More substitutions after the travel. Officials going to have to be on alert today. They're going to have somebody <laughs> at the table every day That's ball. Right. <laughs> Keep track. Make sure you got five. Cal, one, two, three, four. Okay, we have five. Right. <laughs> you got me over here, Cal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things you, you have to understand. Like, both of these teams like to get up and down the floor. So these coaches, they're going to play that chess match with each other. Keep fresh legs in. Pumpkin Brown on the rebound there off the miss. She's going to try to go coast to coast. Oh, nice move around the defender and in. Pumpkin Brown, the senior Alexis Brown for Morgan County. Seven point advantage again. Again, both teams with nice defense. Forcing the steal right there. Back into the hands of Brown. Three on three break. She'll try the other side with the scoop and can't get it to go. Stay in front of the ball. Turn down transition. Nice effort there by Nash. Again, always hitting the floor, always around the ball. She gets it poked away into the hands of Brown. And there's a foul. India Hill, the junior, one of the substitutions just into the game. More substitutions now. So let's check Morgan if we can. That's Foster Mann, Andrew, to make that check that. Tyra Smith in the game, number 33 for the first time. Pumpkin Brown. 
Sydney Nash. Tatiana Davis comes back in. And Autumn Woodard in the game as well. Miss on the rebound. And ball was out of bounds. Let's, while we're at it, let's now check Jackson Atlanta. <laughs> Erica Gibbons in the game. Mrs. Mayfield is back in. Tamisha Walker is in. Tyranny Smith has the ball right there. Also, Kayla Thomas in. The block and back the other way now. Again, good defense on both ends. Woodard gets it to Davis, to Brown. Nash will try a long jumper from 18. That won't go. And a foul on the rebound. They're going to get Woodard over the back. You know, probably one of the biggest words that we haven't used yet, and I can see it's going to happen, is who's going to have the most composure? You know, you, you want to get shots in high volume if you're Jackson and Morgan, you want to attack the basket because you have those players where you can attack the basket. But at some point, when you can't, you do roll it all up in that one little biscuit and create it to be composure. Well, you're exactly right. You're seeing really right now, Jackson making a lot of unforced errors right now. Great dish by Davis and on some rejection on the back end. Erica Gibbons from behind. And it was a clean block, out of bounds. It'll remain Morgan County. But to your point, Jackson, one more look at it right here. Davis with a nice look. And great recovery there by Erica Gibbons for Jackson to prevent that layup. She's going to stay around the basketball. I think that's block number two for her. So under a minute to go right now. It's been all Morgan County here. And all Tatiana Davis to Nash for three, and it's in. Sydney Nash. It's a double-digit lead for Morgan County. Arnold to Smith off the backboard for the three. That won't go. Morgan on a 10-2 run, trying to add to it. Nash, the bounce pass oh, wow. ahead. Oh, can't get it to go. Brown can't get it to go. And we got a foul on the play. It'll be Davis shooting a pair, trying to get a double-digit point total here. In the first quarter, that foul, by the way, call on Kamisha Walker. That's her second. That could be a problem. One more look at this. Again, the good energy, Keisha. When you're a point guard and you can rebound and, and the, the numbers that Nash can do it, you're going to get a fast break. You get your rim running really, really fast, and you get to the foul line. Davis missing the first, maybe a bit shaken up when she hit the floor there. You can just see Morgan, Morgan County right now. They've established the aggressiveness. The next foul that, that's committed for them, they're in the bonus. Wow. And there it is. That's her 10th point of this quarter for Tatiana Davis. 19-8 now. The Bulldogs on top. Jackson with less than a half minute to go. Oh! In and out. Mayfield the rebound to Gibbons Understand on the drive. Understand the clock right now. Now, the, you heard a bit of a reaction from the crowds because Kamisha Walker really kind of <laughs> already picked up her dribble and jumped <laughs> out of that, jumped around, and they thought it might have been a travel, but the referee saw it elsewhere. That foul, by the way, was on Woodard. Autumn Woodard already her second foul. And Smith free throwing good. So Woodard comes out with two fouls. Nash also will sit the final 12 seconds here of the first quarter. Morgan County doing all that they want to do. Here in the opener, second free throw, no good. Davis, the rebound, quickly up court with nine seconds to go. To Brown, oh, the pass was too high. Composure, composure. Use the clock for its advantage. Get your rest actively. You set up for the last second shot. That's Smith from half court almost, and oh, almost put that in. How about the Morgan County Bulldogs closing this quarter on a 15-5 run in the last 4-15 as they are one quarter toward their first state title in 33 years. We've got a barn burner so far. Coach Reed's his story coming up. And what a great story it's been so far. Morgan County on top by 10. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. This isn't just any team. This is your home team, okay? It's not about A team or B team. It's not about your boss telling you to be a team player or to take one for the team. No, home team is about pride. It's about standing strong, pulling together, and going crazy about a bad call you know is right. But because it was against your home team, it must be wrong. Look, some people just don't get it because it's not their team. But Farm Bureau Insurance does because everyone needs a home team for insurance. 
and we are that. This isn't Madison Square Garden. These drills probably won't make anyone a number one draft pick. But these players are practicing for something important. While they work on their jump shots, they're also learning teamwork, discipline, self-confidence, how to deal with wins and losses. Skills that will make them winners long after they leave the court. Support high school activities in your community. Because when kids take part, they get set for life. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the Technical College System of Georgia. TCSG Colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG College in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. Welcome back to Macon, GHSA Basketball Championships. Game three of six today, the Class 3A girls game and Morgan County Bulldogs up by 10. Joshua Reeves, uh, the head coach of Morgan County. What a week. On Tuesday, his second son was born. So on top of all of this, trying to win a state championship, he's a new dad as well, not getting much sleep at home. Well, I mean, Mom wanted some attention. She needed some attention <laughs> at home with the state tournament going on. What better way to have it than to just have a second son being born? I think that's fantastic. I mean, I want to know how he's going to handle this. Not only is this the biggest game of the year, but now he's got a brand new baby at home. If he wasn't sleeping before because of this game, I don't know if he's going to be getting much sleep once he returns back home with mom and brand new baby. That's so true. But congratulations to the Reeves family. Big brother there. He's four years old. You know, he said he had a fear of being called out during a playoff game, so they went on and planned a C-section. His, his wife, by the way, works in the political field, so bad timing for her, too, part of an election year. Uh, but he said, wouldn't it be cool if we could say, remember the week when we had the baby and won a state championship in the same week? So far, they're off to a good start. Ten-point lead as we start the second quarter. Congrats again to Coach Reeves. Miss there, and very quickly on the other end, it's Jackson throwing the ball away. Great job there by Pumpkin Brown for the steal on the outlet pass and brings it back down court now for the Bulldogs. Heading up here in the half court. This is Brown. Ten-point lead for Morgan County despite only two points from the region co-player of the year, Pumpkin Brown. That's Davis, and that's the reason why. She's got ten points. That one's in and out. Rebound won't go. Walker with the rebound. And Morgan County, they've only had two assists on eight field goal. Field goal. They've done a great job of just creating shots for themselves, getting out of transition and getting some good baskets. Foul was on number 12. It's Brittany Belzer. It's her first. Goals are one of the reserves. Again, Morgan County going deep. Both teams using a lot of players. Nice play here on the inbound. That was a great look by number 15, Mayfield. She saw the opening on their defender with her back turned to her. And a good look there on the pass. And an easy bucket for Jackson Atlanta. 19-11 now. Brown on the wing. Looks at a three. Oh, off the backboard and in. Bank is open on a Saturday after 2 o'clock. No ATM needed, baby. No, sir. <laughs> Direct deposits. Back at the other end, that's Gibbons can't get it to go. And the fans wanted a foul on that one. Brown feeling it. She gets stripped. Here comes Jackson. Walker again. Ahead to Gibbons. That time it goes. Erica Gibbons already with eight points now, keeping Jackson Atlanta in this game. Now down by nine. Now you see Jackson kind of making their move. They're getting a little bit more acquainted to the atmosphere, what's going on. They stay focused, you know. The coach was just talking about how they wanted to have that normalcy, but just enjoy the atmosphere and what they've done. So, you know, she's giving them a lot of mental preparation by taking them to big arenas and understanding how, how they have to play in these big type atmospheres. Again, Jackson getting it a little bit out of control. Great defense there by Kamisha Walker, but she's called for the foul. And that's her third foul. Boy, how big is that? One more look at this last basket here by Jackson. Getting it out early. Just a great bounce pass and a good finish by Gibbons. 
Walker has been such a force on defense. That's a really big blow that she's out now for the last 6.07 here of the first half with three fouls for Jackson. Tatiana Davis, 10 points in the first quarter. Nash for three. That's off the front iron. Gibbons the rebound, but it's stripped away. That won't go. Great defense there by Tatiana Davis, but couldn't get the rebound. Pass going to be put back in. And you know, Morgan, Morgan County's doing a great job of just hanging around the ball after a rebound. It's, it's making it hard for Jackson to get their outlets and start their transition. They've got good long arms, very active defensively. Nice look there by Gibbons. Gets it in. Tamara White on the assist. The sophomore point guard with a good look. Good vision. Jackson County's doing a great job now just making the extra pass. You know, a lot of uh, in the first period, they're doing a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, trying to finish one-on-one. -on -one. Right now, the last two possessions they've had, they finished with an extra pass at the basket. Jackson called for the foul. That is on Smith. That's her first, and it should be a one-on-one -on -one bonus shooting situation for Tatiana Davis. Talked about both of these teams making great runs after early on going out of state and playing against a very tough competition from around the country. Both of these teams going undefeated in region play. And then through the playoffs to make it here to make it. Free throw is no good by Davis. That's Gibbons with the rebound. She'll take it all the way in. Off the backboard and no, but she'll be shooting a pair. You know, and that just seems to be the theme of a lot of state championship games that, that we've had here this weekend. A lot of the girls team have taken themselves out of, of state to test how good they want to be. You know, you play in the state, just a great drive by Gibbons right there, but you play in the state and, and you feel like you get comfortable seeing certain faces in front of you all the time. Well, now it's trying to go test the waters, see how good you are if you're going to your neighbors, neighboring states like Tennessee or Florida or Alabama or South Carolina. You know, and you get some of the, the bigger schools that end up going to D.C. and Texas and Minnesota to, to play against these nationally ranked high school teams. You lick your wounds, you lose and learn, and you come back and you make better teams and better people of yourselves. The foul was on Bryant. Both free throws missed, by the way, and now Jackson with an offensive rebound gets another shot at it. Ball is hit out of bounds. It'll go to Morgan County. And, you know, to your point, again, you know, we talked with, a, with Coach Powell. She was saying the thing is they got an even end of region play in the playoffs and realized that everyone kind of plays the same style. Tatiana Davis trying to get a little bit cute and lost it out of bounds. <laughs> One of the few things she has done wrong. But, you know, very quickly, it's only a six-point uh, advantage now as Jackson is very quickly with some fast break baskets crept back into this. Trying to cut that lead in half, a deficit in half, and that's a missed shot by Kayla Thomas. And you hear the Morgan County student section reminding her of her lack of marksmanship on that one particular shot right there. Near steal, and it is a steal. The press again by Jackson paying off. Here's a sophomore guard, White, shooting and missing. Ball out of bounds. Morgan County ball. You know, Jackson just does a really good job of just keeping the hands around the ball, just being super, super active on the front line. Morgan, Morgan County has to establish that. They did that at the beginning of the game by just leaking somebody out. Like, I just see this pass right here with Nash. Get out. Get down to your basket. Make it create an easy pass for an easy basket. Great job. Great vision there on the assist by Jataria Bryant. Jataria Bryant, I'm sorry. Nash on the layup. Jackson now has missed three of their last 12. More offensive woes for the Jaguars. Trying to change that right here is Thomas. And she's fouled on the drive. And they're going to say she was already in motion of shooting. Two shots coming up. Is that great basket pass. look again? Yeah, great pass by Bryant. And you had an easy finish by Nash. You know, her shots aren't coming easy right now. So if she gets those two points, that's great confidence for her offensively. Bryant called for her second foul. She will take a seat now and replace by number 25, Selena Fortune as that was Kayla Thomas who made the free throw. Thomas transferred in this season. High basketball IQ. This is maybe the most underrated player on the team, and I can see that. A lot of skill for this team. She misses the second, though. Quickly comes Morgan County. That's Brown up and can't get that to go. Rebound is loose. Picked up by Fortune. By McDowell, that's Woodard. In the other quarter, Jackson finally corrals it. Loses it again. Nash has the ball. Here come the Bulldogs. 
Nash stops, shoots. Great defense. Oh, by Erica Gibbons. And they say that she got her on the hand on that block. And we'll be shooting two for Sydney Nash. And for Gibbons, that's her first foul for Mater Jackson High School. Composure, composure, composure. Erica Gibbons, number one. Team high 11 points, really keeping Jackson in the game. Doing a lot of the little things. We've got a timeout here on the court, and we'll take a break as well here on GPB. 4.07 to go until halftime. Morgan County still in control, up by seven. What is by moonlight an empty field is by the magic of electricity, sacred ground. As the official energy provider of the GHSA, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives proudly support our student athletes. We are there, illuminating the glory moments fans just have to see. Capturing the hustle, elevating champions, sharing the win. Georgia's EMCs, empowering our youth, lighting the way. Right back here at the Macon Centerplex here. Larry Smith, Keisha Brown, and Jackie Britton and the whole GPB Army bringing you basketball this afternoon. Uh, Jackson right now down seven to Morgan County, 24-17. But we talked before the break about Erica Gibbons and uh, what she has done, 11 points already here, Keisha. She's done it all to keep the Jaguars in this game. And, and she's that versatile player that each team has. You know, they're going to look at her to do a lot of the good things very, very well today. She's got 11 points, five rebounds, two blocks, and if that last shot was, was not called for a foul, she'd have three blocks right now. An Alabama State signee, she's going to do everything she can. She knows this is her last game as a high school, and she wants to end up on top. Yeah, she's outstanding. As you mentioned, a shot blocker does those good long arms really defensively. We've seen a lot of great defensive plays on both ends. And really looking forward to watching this game as they make some adjustments at halftime. But both teams kind of settling in a little bit. And again, just taking it. We saw it in last night's game as well uh, with Winder, Barrow, and Southwest Cab of just, again, the game you and I did of teams getting excited, getting caught up in emotions. It's so easy for us to say sitting here, and you know how it is having been on the court in your great career, taking that moment, just taking a beat, just to collect yourself, get your thoughts, see where you are on the court, and then make a move. Right, and you know, a lot of times it's not going to be someone like Tatiana, uh, um, excuse me, like Nash, who is such a vocal leader, such the heartbeat of the team for Morgan County. It, it's going to have to come from someone who might be that sixth man off the bench to see, like, maybe this is just a little erratic play for us. Let me get to Davis. Let me calm her down. And it might be able to smooth the whole team out. Well, Morgan County began 3 of 12 and now 6 of 13 shooting since then. Jackson, meanwhile, trying to heat up 3 of 6 shooting here this quarter. As again, we are just approaching the halfway mark here in the second quarter. Gibbons again, and she's fouled. So that will be on number 14, Santaji Reed, who got the blood situation. And look, you see the big band-aid there. She got, looks like got cut pretty good behind her ear. She tried to get a lob pass to Gibbons, and she just pushed her a little bit out of the way. So for Reed, that's her first foul. Both teams now in the bonus. Seventh team foul. And that's referee Simone Red over at the uh, scorer's table making sure it's a seventh foul. Score, official scorer says yes it is. And we've got Gibbons at the line. Shooting a one and bonus. It's that to go. Jackson Atlanta once again had never won a playoff game prior to the season back when they were even called Southside High School and then since 2010 Maynard Jackson High School 0 and 8 record in the playoffs before this year. Second free throw is no good. It's off the hands of Arnold and it'll be Morgan County ball. Jackson Jackson County the girls at Jackson they just decided to commit to each other, commit to you know wanting to be that upper echelon of high school basketball teams in, in the city of Atlanta and, and more than the state of Georgia. So they committed to that last year and when they're at that last last game. And, and you can see the overall success and the production of it right here in this state tournament championship game. That was Arnold good defense there to knock the pass away and near steal again. Arnold a little too aggressive and we'll go to the line again. Reed will be shooting one in bonus. And to your point, you know, what a great uh, second round. That's Arnold's uh, second foul, by the way for Maynard Jackson High School, but it was the Jaguars 30 and one, had a real scare in the second round of the playoffs. They had to uh, take, uh, uh, Hart County took them to overtime and outscored them 15 to seven in that overtime to get a win 79-71. 
And as you mentioned, really coming together and just planning on, you know, hey, can we be that elite team in the States? <laughs> I love being at high school. <laughs> Sad thing is, when I was 16, I was one of those guys. <laughs> There's so there is hope that they can maybe grow out of it. <laughs> you were one of them, and I was one of these young ladies on the there court. There you go. That's hoping right. you were cheering for me. I was. I was cheering for you. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> Great defense right here. Winds up though back in the hands of Jackson, and that's great effort there by Kayla Thomas to force the action right into uh, the chest of Fortune. She picks up her first foul, and it'll be Thomas shooting two. You see her numbers, eight points, nine rebounds a game for Coach Powell's squad. Coach Powell, as you mentioned at the top, has just such a great passion, played her college basketball at Clark Atlanta. Great passion, she said, for seeing young inner city women blossom into young women, successful both in athletics and in life. Right, and, and you know, a lot of, of, of her trip, they went to Tennessee. A lot of the trip that they had was being able to take the girls outside of their comfort zone. You're seeing a different style of play. You know, all the way down to they don't play with the Wilson Wave ball, they play with right. Smalden ball. So, <laughs> you know, and, and I understand that being able to play overseas, you know, we're, it's molten over there, and it's a really glossy feel. And you've been practicing with the wave ball the whole week, and you turn around, and now you're playing with a glossy feel type of ball. It's messing up my shot. That's my excuse. <laughs> you know, so it's just being able to take these girls out of their comfort zone and understand that they, this is how you adjust to life as it comes to you. I think it's a great experience, and I think it's something great that she has decided to take on her shoulders. And she has such great passion. She says this is the uh, best team she's ever coached, also the hardest team she's ever coached as well, as Brown has called for the foul there for Morgan County. And so we're getting to a lot of free throws here in the second quarter, 303 to go, and this time it'll be uh, Tyranny Smith going to the line uh, to shoot a one and one. Right now, if you're Jackson, you have to be able to take, care, take advantage of the clock being stopped and making free throws. First one is good, so she'll shoot another, and that's Brown, her, her first foul. Morgan County star player. But yeah, she said, you know, the easy teams to coach are the ones who don't know anything. The hard ones are the ones who <laughs> want to do their own thing. And she said she has a lot of girls here, a lot of basketball IQ that sometimes want to do their own thing. Both free throws made right there uh, by Smith. And so it's up to a six-point lead now. Jackson hanging around. Davis been quiet after a 10-point first quarter. Brown. As you can imagine, she gets a lot of defensive attention. Reset for the senior. Stay down in your basketball stance if you're Jackson right now and be able to help. Gets that up to go, up and gets the shot off to go, but can't uh, get it to go. Great defense by Davis right there to steal away the, uh, the outlet pass. And uh, they're in the, the double bonus, and so now it'll be Davis shooting a pair. Yeah, that's tough because if you're, if you're a point guard of your team, Tierney, you have to go get that ball, make it easy, make it easy outlet, get that ball from that post player, and you in, you start your transition. So shooting two, this is Davis. That one to go. That's her first point of the quarter after scoring ten in the first quarter. Foul, by the way, was on Smith for Jackson Atlanta. That's her second foul. And you see her coming out of the game and Tamara White coming back in. 28-21, 2.32 to go. Halftime show is coming up next with Mark and Jackie. Second free throw is off. White the rebound. Here come the Jaguars. Trail most of this game. Big push in the first quarter by Morgan County to break it open. As much as a 10-point lead at one point. And that's a great job there. It's a two-pointer by Shantavius Arnold. That's her first basket of the game. That's great. You've got senior leadership coming in off the bench. Right back at you. That's Santaji Reed. She's just a freshman. And a travel in the front court. Good defense by Nash. White shuffled her feet. Good look at Reed. That was a great looking shot right there. That was just a two pointer. It was a three. So Reed, five points off the bench. Here's one more look at that last basket. 
I'm coming right back at you. Here's my three ball. Nice camera work right there. 31, there he corrected the score there. 31-23. Fiara Cameraman, she knew. <laughs> she knew it was a three-pointer. She couldn't put the camera down and tell it. She had to keep working, so. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I give Kelsey a hard time every chance I give. <laughs> that foul was on Smith, and so now that's her third foul, and so suddenly a little bit of foul trouble here for uh, one of the key players, Tyranny Smith. Jackson's starting point guard. And she'll come out of the game. White will come back in at the 148 mark. Bells are shooting. She missed the first one and gets one more. Brittany Bells are at the line. There she is. Senior. One of the group of seniors, this Morgan County team with the Elite Eight back in 2012, lost to Laney, graduated 14 seniors off that team, so it was all freshmen the next year. They didn't have enough players to even field a JV team. And so all these seniors were freshmen playing varsity, taking the lumps back in 2013. It's resulted right now in a trip to the state championship game because they have got a lot of experience. Arnold misses the three, but tracked down the rebound right there as Gibbons. And she's fouled here against the sideline. You see that foul's going to be on. That's going to be on Fortune. That's her second. One more look here. Great hustle to, to go and get the rebound. Kind of reaching in. Two shots coming. Nice roll. Both teams with a double bonus here. So, yes, yeah, just to finish that again, what a story. Coach Reeves, and there's a good look at him that he was talking about with all these seniors that he had. He said they just, we put them out there, let them take their lumps, and they just gelled as a team, really come together. They've been through so much over four years. From the very beginning, playing varsity as freshmen to here in their final game, trying to cap off their careers with a state championship, the first for the program since 1983. So a seven-point game right now. Bulldogs back on the attack. There's Reed, the freshman. Back to Davis, the lefty. Back to Reed. She'll drive in, in between two defenders, all too hard off the glass. Long outlet pass now to Gibbons. Great job by Reed to knock it away. It's a good hustle, just getting back in transition defense to keep Jackson from getting an easy layup. And they're slowly chipping into this lead just by getting to the free throw line. They got to continue to be aggressive. So Thomas to inbound now for Jackson. Some top for White. She prowls the pass. White driving in. Can't get that to go, and she's fouled by Reed. That'll be her second foul. One more look at it right here. A little too physical. You know, one thing I think that, that a lot of the spectators don't, don't understand is, is you have to be able to allow that dribbler with that freedom of movement. So once that dribbler faces up and, and they're, they're making their, their drive to the basket, you know, it's either you got to get in front of them and be in correct defensive position or let him go. So White makes the first one. Keep in mind, Jackson getting all this done without uh, Kamisha Walker, the star defensive player, who's out with three fouls right now. She went out at the 6.07 mark. One of two free throws made, so it's a six-point game still. Back to the way now. That is up and in. That's Brittany Belzer. This is a great little spark plug off the bench right now. Just taking it hard to the basket. Bulldogs back out to an eight-point lead. There's White. Reed on her to Arnold. Trying to get it inside to Mayfield, but can't. That's Thomas. Mayfield, White, 34 seconds. White on the attack. The sophomore reserve guard, she's in. Can't get that to go. Follow doesn't go. Mayfield couldn't get the offensive board and the putback to go in. That comes up short, and so a foul called here on Erica Gibbons. That's her second foul for Jackson, Atlanta. And yet another trip to the line for two. A lot of fouls. It's going to be really, it's going to be interesting come the third period because you have a lot of people with two fouls, some important people with three fouls. And, you know, when you need them down the stretch, you got to make sure you have to be able to absorb those fouls. Good look there at Alexis Brown, Pumpkin Brown with the free throw. As Nash comes back in the game. And Reed goes out.
Brown, all-region player all four years of her career. 26 points against Hart County in the region championship. Second one's no good. Follow shot misses at the 20 point, 20 second mark now. Very quickly down court, Tamara White. Hounded in the front court. Oh, the long pass trying to get it to Mayfield underneath and it's knocked out of bounds. 10.9 left and so Morgan County gets one more chance to build this out to a 10 point lead just as they had at the end of the first quarter. Jackson had six players to score this quarter. And then all of a sudden, you see Morgan County had three people surrounding the ball. They could have got an easy basket in that last play down the other end, but they had three people surrounding the basketball. It was Tyra Smith on the missed uh, jumper that uh, the ball bounced out of bounds at 1.7 left. So Thomas, that will not count. It was, uh, ball was released after the buzzer went out. And so Morgan County withstands a furious uh, Jackson run, but they hold on to a nine-point lead here at halftime, 35 to 26. Uh, what a job they've done. Let's go over to Jackie. She's talking to the coach. Thanks, guys. Coach, I bet you love having a girl like Alexis Brown on your side. I love having Alexis Brown on my side. I love all our girls. We uh, They're playing with a lot of heart right now, pushing the tempo just like we wanted to do. And, uh, yeah, you, get, you need a gamer when it comes on. Tatiana Davis, Alexis Brown, they're gamers. They step up and they play real hard. And Pumpkins, you know, we call her Pumpkin. Pumpkin's working her butt off right now. And, she, uh, you know, she's got to fight for everything she's got, but that's what she always does. She's going to be the one out there fighting. All right, Coach. Congratulations on the new baby as well. Mark, we'll send it over to you at the set. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jackie. Coming up on the GPB Halftime Show, we'll have scores and highlights from earlier on. Plus, we'll find out what fans are buzzing about in the world of social media. Plus, it's all coming up next on the GBB Halftime Show. We're live from the Macon Coliseum, live from the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships. Right now, Morgan County leads Jackson Atlanta 35-26. We are live on the great GBB. Like video games is all about getting to the next level. Mastering skills, gaining knowledge, and setting goals are crucial to success in both. I attended the College Career Academy when I was a sophomore. At the time, I was working at Taco Bell, but I realized that it just wasn't for me. But what I do here in my job is very similar to what I did at the College and Career Academy. Georgia Department of Education's Career Pathway courses give you the chance to power up your future. Information is at georgiasfutureworkforce.org. Cotton contributes $2.5 billion to the state's economy annually. It takes more than 60 cotton gins and manufacturers to bring cotton into our everyday lives. Kids always like to stay in the pool a little too long. And when they do get out, covered in goosebumps, you feel the urge to wrap them up. The cozy embrace of cotton does the job. Cotton, the natural choice for Georgia. Today on GPB. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. This isn't just any team. This is your home team, okay? It's not about A team or B team. It's not about your boss telling you to be a team player or to take one for the team. No, home team is about pride. It's about standing strong, pulling together, and going crazy about a bad call you know is right. But because it was against your home team, it must be wrong. Look, some people just don't get it because it's not their team. But Farm Bureau Insurance does because everyone needs a home team for insurance. And we are that. Welcome to the GPB Sports Halftime Show. We are at the break of the girls' 3A state championship game between Morgan County and Jackson Atlanta High School. We'll have first half stats and highlights coming up. But first, we are going to check out the scores on the Georgia EMC scoreboard. We've crowned two state champions so far. We're halfway through game three. First up today at 11 a.m., it was the girls' Class A private school championship game. And St. Francis, the Lady Knights, 
beat Green Forest Christian 63 to 37. In the boys class 1A private school championship, same two schools, but Green Forest Christian's boys win that one 78 to 66. Right now we're at the half of the AAA girls game. Morgan County leads Jackson Atlanta 35-26, and Morgan County's boys will play in a little bit, taking on the defending champion, Jenkins High School out of Savannah. And then in Class 6A for the girls, you've got Tucker and McEacher. And McEacher looking to snag another state title. Then for the 6A boys, it's Westlake versus Pebblebrook. A lot more to look forward to as we get ready to continue this halftime show. And we've got a few more games to get to later on tonight. But first, let's get to some of your comments on social media. Don't forget that you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at GPB Sports. Let's see what fans are talking about. We have Leah chiming in here. Wouldn't want to make history with anyone else at Alexis Brown. This obviously teammates of Morgan County to Leah Adams in there somewhere. All of them looking like they're having fun so far. They're up at the half. So good congratulations to them so far. Then we have Fred chiming in saying MJJ all day. That apparently is a hashtag going around Jackson Atlanta that they use for all their school sports saying good luck in Macon. And then we've got that guy apparently, that guy chiming in. <laughs> Can't wait to see our Morgan County girls and boys win today. Hashtag white out. You guys are really showing up here at the Macon Coliseum, that's for sure. Then we have Becky chiming in. Let's go Lady Jags, proud of this team, hardworking young ladies and a phenomenal coach. Make sure you send us your photos. Tell us who you're rooting for. Also tell us where you're watching from. If you're outside the state of Georgia, you've got a friend or a family member in the game. Don't forget that you can tell us you're watching from there by streaming. Obviously, you'll be watching the gpb.org slash sports. But send us your photos on social media as well. Before we get to what's left in the second half of the game and everything else that's in store, first, let's take a break. And it's time for our technological, technological system of Georgia, brought to you by TCSG. Looking for a career that helps sustain our environment? Look to the Technical College System of Georgia. Choose a career in sustainable technology like solar power, environmental engineering, natural resources management, and many more. Get hands-on instruction from TCSG instructors with real-world experience. Change your life. Let TCSG help you find a career and a job. TCSG.edu. Well, you know, the Lady Jaguars, they had not won a playoff game in school history until this year. They won four in a row to make it to the championship game. And Josh Reeves, man, what a week <laughs> he's having. I know. I was saying earlier, you know, I, I hope he's going to get some sleep at some point because he was talking about how difficult it's been already. I mean, with the state championship game, the biggest game of the year on the line, and then he's got a new baby at home with mom and then a, a brother as well. So they're all they're all watching and Man, I, I don't want to be him. There, there's no <laughs> sleep for about the next 18 or 19 I, I years, yeah, I don't think. That's what I hear. That's what they tell me. <laughs> We're getting ready for the second half of this girls' 3A state championship game between Morgan County looking for their first title since 1983 and the Lady Jaguars of Jackson High School looking for their first win. Larry Smith and Keisha Brown are on the call for the play-by-play. -play. There oh, they are. Cool. They're a fun group. We love hanging out with those guys there. <laughs> and nice. they love hanging out with themselves. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I'll join you on the sidelines in just a few minutes. brings out the best in all of us. At Regions, every day is game day. Here, beauty is a lot more than skin deep. For more than 100 years, we have focused on creating individual success stories. This is a place where professors are mentors, competition is cheered, collaboration counts, experience is hands-on, and connections are lifelong. VSU, over 100 majors, championship athletics, focused on your success. What's the next great American invention? Meet a few Georgia Tech students who have an idea. We're Team Replantable, and we've invented a way for people to grow produce right in their kitchen. Engineers and innovators of every stripe present their proposals to the judges. Science and engineering. 
industrial design. Mechanical engineering. engineering. Computer engineering. Electrical engineering. See the teams like who've earned a golden ticket, golden ticket and who will take first place at the 2016 Inventure Prize at Georgia Tech. Wednesday, March 16th on GPB. On Masterpiece, it's time to say farewell. If reason fails, try force. Everyone has a chance. Oh my God. The final episode. We're sisters. And sisters have secrets. Downton Abbey, the final episode on Masterpiece. Sunday at 9 on GPB. Back here at halftime here at the Macon Centerplex. Larry Smith, Keisha Brown, and Jackie Britton. 35-26, Morgan County is on top here at halftime. The Bulldogs, boy, they really did a nice job, really uh, taking uh, control of this game in the first quarter. And uh, with, with, withstanding a big run there by Jackson in the second quarter, nine of their points in the second quarter there come uh, at, at the free throw line, but still they hold off, have a nine-point lead here at halftime. Well, you know, that's, that's what you want to do with, with Jackson. They, kept, they froze the ball just a little bit, being able to get to the foul line. But for Morgan County, they have to continue to push the ball. They were being the aggressor where Morgan County thought that Jackson County was going to be the aggressor. Absolutely. How about Morgan County? It all right now goes on to Tatiana Davis, uh, one of their star players. Uh, she has been outstanding. We'll talk about uh, her in just a moment. First, though, Jackie is uh, talking to the coach. Yes, guys, Coach joins me now. I got to tell you, a girl like Alexis Brown, I mean, is she one of those players that you just kind of have to slow her down? I mean, it seems kind of hard to stop her completely. <laughs> Trying to slow her down between her and that partner of hers. <laughs> um, she is a very strong player and a very confident player. So as a senior, you know, she's playing the role that she stepped up for her team. So we just got to got to slow her down. What's going well for you guys right now? And then what would you like to see differently this second half? Seems like nothing is going well. Um, reaching too much, picking up too many fouls. Not, I guess they're really insecure about the area in which we are, as well as the goal. So we're trying to get them to calm down, run their offense, and make the easy layups. Once we figure we can start getting that in a roll, we were on a roll, then we just stop, completely stop and shut down. But once we get that on a roll, I think we'll be fine. All right, she's looking to get the second half on a roll, guys. We'll send it back over to Larry and Keisha. Okay, yeah, Coach Powell, certainly the player she was talking about right here, number three, uh, Tatiana Davis. This is Brown here. Going inside, coast to coast. Uh, she's the other star player, Alexis Brown. Well, she's just a, a motor. She's going to keep going, keep going, keep going. She'll do it off the dribble. She'll do it from the bank account. But she, Alexis Brown just does a great job of making sure that that team the ball is where it needs to be for her team. Absolutely. Lexus Brown, six points. Davis, a team high, 11 points. Sydney Nash has eight. As we check out the Farm Bureau Georgia halftime stats right here. And Morgan County, 32%. Uh, but the big number here uh, coming out again, look at all the turnovers here. 13 for Jackson Atlanta, 11 for Morgan County. Uh, and the field goal shooting, again, Jackson really struggling, scoring more, uh, hitting more free throws and field goals during that first half. Well, and, and that's a lot of, because they, a lot of anxious, anxiety, you know, you, you get the open opportunity for a layup from a, a steal, and then you're slowing down on, on your shot. So they just have to make sure that they focus in, lock in for these next 16 minutes, and make it count. You know, Morgan County's done a great job of taking care of the keys, rebounding, and, and, and defending. They've done that pretty well. Now you have to be able to defend without fouling. Stats courtesy of West Georgia Technical College. And again, on the other side, uh, the leading scorer in this entire first half for either side, Erica Gibbons, 14 big points. The deceptible floater, that's what it is. And she's, she's done a good job. And, they, and then Gibbons, on both sides of the floor, she's going to be athletic, get out, run the floor, create some opportunities on defense. And for Jackson, as well as Morgan County, now you have to defend without fouling and make sure that you make those easy layups. Coach Powell said they're peaking at the right time for Jackson Jaguars. Can they peak here in the final 16 minutes of the season for them? They've opened the second half down by nine. Again, Jackson in white, and Morgan County in gray, and right away the Jaguars turn the ball over here in the opening seconds. It's Morgan County ball. Brown on the push, looking for Davis. 11 points in the first half, 10 of those coming in the first quarter. And a quick foul here, a quick whistle. You got to get your hands off the ball handler. And it's, it's tough because that's her fourth foul. She's, Smith might be sitting for a while. Yeah, fourth foul for her. And she just came in the game. She sat out quite a bit there in the first half. Brown, nice dish inside. And that will go. Talia Adams gets her first basket. 
just great penetrating. You know, they understand it, that you're going to be able to get into the paint because the defenders, they can't touch you. So if you continue to be aggressive, get into the paint, make that extra pass, you, you'll get an easy layup. Again, Jackson Atlanta again with one of their starters on the bench with four fouls. And that Smith is out. That is Thomas for three. That won't go. Rebound, though, off the hands of Adams, and it'll stay on this end, Jackson Jaguars ball. Inbound here to Mayfield. Nice Inside. back door cut. Great job. Erica Gibbons, 16 points now to lead all scorers in this game. And just a great read by Kayla Thomas to see the back door action happen. Davis to Brown. Morgan County very patient now in the lead again for much of this game. Nash to Davis. Back out to Nash. Shot from 18 is no good. That's Adams. Back to Brown for three. Pumpkin Brown. The bounce won't go. Nash fighting for it. Can't get it. Gibbons collects for Jackson. Trying to go coast to coast. Nice dish to Mayfield and up and in. You know, and, and it wasn't like that fast-paced transition offense that we've been seeing from both teams. Given took her time. She realized she had a two-on-one, made a defense commit, and now you got an easy basket to your teammate. It's great basketball. Jackson staying in the game. Brown is stripped on the drive. That's Thomas pushing it to Gibbons, the scoop, and that's in. And suddenly it's a five-point lead now for Morgan County. Back-to-back -back fast breaks, if you will, for the Jaguars, and it's a ball game once again here early in the third. All right, you definitely don't see Kayla Thomas as that great passer on the team, but she's one of those people that you don't really, she's not on the scout report. She's a silent assassin for them. A great basketball IQ. She saw her the whole way down. Now it's just a matter of what that Morgan defender is going to do. Who is she going to commit to? Gibbons on that basket, 18 points, but just, just committing her third foul just now. And it's Tatiana Davis at the line shooting two. She's off on the first. Morgan County, 8 of 17 from the line. Jackson, 10 of 16. The substitution, Adams comes out. And Fortune comes in. Autumn Woodard, the junior, also in for Morgan County. Second shot is also no good. Nash knocks that rebound away from Mayfield. It'll be Jackson Ball, a chance to cut this lead down to three or even two. They've yet to hit a three-pointer in this game, Jackson Atlanta. Trying for the school's first ever state championship, have never won a playoff game before this run. Good defense there from behind by Davis. Great effort by Nash. Back over to Woodard. And we've got a foul. We've got a timeout. Timeout. Great timeout by Coach Reed. Coach Reed's calling a timeout here for Morgan County at the 526 mark. Saw his team in trouble. So a five-point lead right now for Morgan County again. This is a nice 6-0 run by Jackson Atlanta. Let's go to Jackie Britton for more. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Morgan County, all of their talent. One of them, Sydney Nash, you guys were talking about her a little bit earlier. Just want to talk about what Coach said about her this week, saying that she is really just one of those go-getters. You will always see her on the court diving for every ball. She's just one of those players who does everything well. A lot of energy on defense. She is the motor of this team, as how Coach put it. Got some college looks. So Emmanuel College, Troy McConnell looking at on the one, Sydney Nash, the senior. Again, we talked about the senior class, how they came in as freshmen and have played all four years after a senior-laden team came up short the Elite Eight in 2012 against Laney. And Morgan. she's an all-region team, uh, 2015 and 2016. Sydney Nash is just a great product for our team. Fortune can't get that to go, but collects the rebound. Back out to Pumpkin Brown. Back inside now for Fortune. That won't go. That's Thomas on the rebound, getting out to Walker back in the game. You'll Ural step, but can't get it to go. Gibbons back up. That comes up short. A little too hard off the backboard. Fortune again, and it's a foul. It's going to be on Tamara White, it appears. So again, Jackson, that'll be the third team foul. One more look at this. You know, both teams just hanging around the ball. You can tell that they're just a magnet for the pill. You know, they're hanging around the ball, and they have to be able to secure it 
outlet it quickly, and you get easy buckets on both sides. Foul was on Tamara White. It's her second for Jackson. So Morgan County again holding on to a five-point lead here. 27-3 on the season out of Region 8. 24-game win streak on the line for the Bulldogs. Brown on the spin. She's stripped by Thomas. The other way, she's got numbers. Four on one. Walker back to Thomas. Up and in. It's a three-point game. And the run continues for the Jaguars from Maynard Jackson High School. Back the other way is Davis up and in with a left-handed scoop. That's what you do when you're celebrating on one end from a great transition offense. You get them back on the other end with your own transition offense. And that's a veteran move to your point by Davis to know the emotion of the other side and take advantage of it. White up and in. Tamara White, the sophomore guard, playing in place of Tyranny Smith, who's on the bench with four fouls, the senior. Here comes Nash, the runner from 12 feet, and that is no good. And a foul, charging foul called on Sydney Nash, and that is her second. Jackson Atlanta on a 10-2 run here to close the gap within three, 39-36. We've got a break on the court. We'll take a timeout as well. 3.47 left here in the third quarter. And we've got a game. Morgan County in control, but here come the Jaguars. got here and making glad you're along with us on the Saturday afternoon. This is our third game of the day. Up next, if you like Morgan County, well, the boys team is coming up next. They will play in the boys 3A championship immediately following this one. And then the 6A girls and 6A boys to close out this championship weekend here in Macon. Jackson Atlanta right now on a 10-2 run in the last three minutes and 12 seconds. And number 23, Kayla Thomas. Now, Keisha is a big, big part of that. Well, and it's a big part of that. You're not going to see it so much on a stat sheet as I'm looking at it right now. But what she's given is that extra effort. She's got five assists, three rebounds, four total points, and two steals. You know, and, and a lot of times the silent assassin or the blue collar worker, if you will, the the Oakley, you know, they don't get that rec recognition that they deserve. But you realize that she has become, become that le this leader in this run that Jackson is having right now. She has been fun to watch. This Jackson Atlanta team, 30 and 1 coming in. We mentioned they had not lost since Thanksgiving. Went up to Tennessee, got beat up by the National Christian School out of DC. But Coach Powell said that was what we needed to wake us up to push each other. They have pushed themselves here in the second half on a 10 2 run to close this gap within three. And there's Thomas, as you talked about. Spin move inside. Good block there by Fortune. Ball on the ground. Fortune picks it up. Gets it away to Davis. Oh, but she throws it out of bounds. Threw it behind Davis. Couldn't control the pass and a turnover for Morgan County. That's their 14th of this game. You can see they've almost put Thomas at the point guard right now just because she's doing a lot more distribution. She's got five assists to the Morgan County, has six total assists as a team. 326 right now. Let's go over to Jackie Britton for more. Thanks, guys. In the huddle just now with Jackson Atlanta. Coach instilling them in look. Number four is going to drive. You guys have to box out. Don't let her take control. Make sure that we are driving, too. And also, hey, no fouls. That's from the bench of Jackson Atlanta. Okay, Jackie, thanks. By the way, that foul was on Brittany Belzer of Morgan County. It's her second. First free throw, no good by Gibbons. Second one off the front iron as well. But Walker collects it. Steps away. No. Battle for the board inside. It is Gibbons, and it's a foul before the shot. Foul is going to be on Autumn Wooder. That is her third for Morgan County, the team's third in this half. Still a three-point game as well in the third quarter. Let's stick with the threes, shall we? Thomas oh, three ball. for three. Sure. <laughs> Gibbons, the rebound, the putback, can't get that to go. Guess who? Thomas again. She's blocked by Fortune. Gibbons. And she's fouled. 
you have to just continually commend Jackson Atlanta on their effort and the pride that they're showcasing right now. You know, even though it's it, it's that good energy and you want to be able to, to cash in on the multiple offensive rebounds and staying with it, staying in the basket, and just continue to draw the contact on Morgan County and get to the free throw line. Well, and, and now we have problems with uh, Jackson suddenly can't hit a free throw. That's three yeah. misses in a row as that foul was on Selena Fortune. That's her third. Woodard comes out of the game for Morgan County as well as Bells are out. Reed is in. Breathe when you get to the free throw line. You know, a lot of kids that you have 10 seconds to shoot it. Take your time, breathe. Givens, 7 of 10 shooting from the field and the free throw there. She now has 19 points. She steps out, takes a breather here at the 302 mark. Shantavius Arnold replaces her. Back in the front court now, we mentioned also Tyra Smith, the senior forward in for Morgan County. Brown again with trouble holding on to the ball. She's had a few troubles with that today. Back in the hands of Thomas. She'll make the push. Trying to tie it up here. Two-point game. Or take the lead, maybe. No. Arnold off of the three-pointer. Reed brings it up in the 236 mark. A slow, lazy pass. Taken away by Walker. Back up and, oh, she can't get it to go. Reed quickly comes back. Three-on-three three game. Davis for three. Hits it. She relishes these moments. She takes advantage of the energy that's in this building right now. Tatiana Davis with the field goal. Her three-pointer there. She's got 16 points. Ball knocked away. A steal by Fortune. Knocked away again by Walker. She tries a three that's well short. And that'll be out of bounds. One more look at it here for Jaguars. Good look by Reed in the corner. Sees Davis spotting up for three. It's been pretty quiet. Uh, again, no field goals in that second quarter, but all of a sudden, 16 points now for her. Meanwhile, Jackson, the shooting slump continues. Six straight misses from the field, and uh, Coach Powell to talk about it for the Jaguars. You know, if, you, if you're Jackson Atlanta, you can't get down. You're only down five points. Just stay with it. It'll fall. You, you have to trust your training, trust everything that you've been through. And just because you're in this moment, basketball is a game of runs, game of highs, game of lows. This is your this is your low part. But now you just have to slowly climb out of it. That's right. You're watching GPB. And, you know, if you're wondering what the next great American invention will be, we'll meet some innovative Georgia Tech students who have an idea. Watch the teams make their proposals to the judges and see who takes home first place in the 2016 Inventure Prize at Georgia Tech. That's Wednesday, March 16th at 7.30, only on GPB. Always a great time of year to be here with you from Macon. Morgan County up by five, as we were talking about again, the run they have made, 27-3. Out of Region 8. Such an exciting time to be a part of uh, all of these programs. You know, Coach Reeves talked about that losing early in the season or the holidays. He said losing built a lot more character than winning does. And he told the team he expected them to be right here at this time. And they are here. The foul troubles you can see, Gibbons and Smith, both with four fouls now. Walker with three for Jackson Atlanta. Turnover here. Nice steal back in the hands of Thomas. She drives in. Too hard off the glass. Rebound fought for. And a foul here. And if that's on Gibbons, is that her fifth? It is on Gibbons. That's tough. Correction, let's check and make sure. Maybe just her fourth. It's her fourth foul. We, we're sorry, their graphic was wrong a moment ago. Just the fourth foul here for Gibbons. So she sits the bench. So still, that is crucial. Now two starters, Gibbons and Smith, with four fouls each. And still, again, the 130 mark. Still approaching here in the third quarter. Nash quickly all the way down. The scoop shot comes up short. Mayfield on the rebound, and Nash called for the reach-in foul. Just, just understand the process of Nash. She takes the ball coast to coast. She goes one on three, misses the layup. She ends up out of bounds. She comes back inbounds and forces a jump ball, and now her team has an extra possession. Now, it wasn't a foul, I guess. It's out of bounds instead. Is It's Fortune with the ball. Now to Nash. She stops from 14. That's off the back iron. Fortune the rebound. To Davis for three. Second chance points, and she makes it count. Tatiana Davis for the Bulldogs. Tatiana put an invisible X on that spot right there. 
find Davis to strip. Sloppy plate, ball handling there by Thomas. Stop and pop. This is a go again. Tatiana Davis. This is her quarter. This is trouble if you're Jackson right now. She can score in bunches. And she will not let up right now. She's going to go 1,000 miles an hour. She had 10 points in the first quarter, 10 points in this quarter for Morgan County. Tatiana Davis, the junior for Morgan County. And what was a two-point game is all of a sudden a 10-point lead again. An 8-0 run right here for Morgan. Third foul, meanwhile, for Reed for Morgan County. And this is Tatiana and Munches. You're going to see it. We can probably get the whole highlight in just one reel. Because when she gets flashed, she gets that flash, that energy, she will score and she will use that energy. She has to transfer that on defense, continue to get those steals, those deflections, great easy buckets for herself and her teammates. And this is Walker now shooting three free throws. She made the first two in Davis. 21 points now in the game as we get a look at India Hill back in the game. We saw her briefly in the first half. It's Mayfield sitting down. In foul trouble for the Jackson High School Jaguars out of Atlanta. Walker, good trip to the line as she makes all three free throws. You gotta Davis. stay in front of her. She's on fire right now. And she feels it, can't get that to go too hard off the glass. Walker the rebound and she's fouled by Nash. That's Nash's third foul, and again, a lot of whistles in this game. Got to be careful. She has three. Reed has three. Woodard has three. Fortune as well, all for Morgan County. That's their foul situation. Ticking down now to half a minute to go in this third quarter. Class 3A championship game. Thomas with the spin move, and she'll go to the line. You know, and Jackson just did something so simple. They, they gave Kayla Thomas the ball. They spread their offense out, and they said, Thomas, take her. Selena Fortune picked up her fourth foul there, and so it is Kayla Thomas. She'll get another. Jeteria Bryant checking back in the game from Morgan County as Fortune comes out. Smith also out, and Brown back in for Coach Reeves' Bulldogs. Second try here for Thomas, and that one rolls in. So we're back to a six-point game now, 27.5 left. Full court press put on. Brown gets it across the timeline with no problem. Sticking down the final seconds. Nice pick there by Bryant to free up Brown on the jumper. Can't get that to go, but guess who's there? For the follow-up putback, Davis. Under 10 seconds now. Walker to Thomas, and she's fouled, it appears, on Bryant. It is on Deteria Bryant, and that's her third foul. And now Morgan over the limit. So Jax will be shooting the bonus for the rest of the way as we're at 5.9 seconds left to go here in the third. Thomas barely draws iron. Final seconds here. Ball turned over. Up and it's not going to count. They were trying to say that Tamara White released the ball after the buzzer went off. And so it's no basket. But what a game we have here. We are through three quarters. And it is mass hysteria. Pandemonium. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Sorry. The Bulldogs have the lead right now with the Jaguars. It is 49 to 41. If you've had fun so far, Stay with us. Eight more minutes of fun as we crown a champion in the girls' 3A state title game. Keep it here. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. This isn't just any team. This is your home team, okay? It's not about A team or B team. It's not about your boss telling you to be a team player or to take one for the team. No, home team is about pride. It's about standing strong, pulling together, and going crazy about a bad call you know is right. But because it was against your home team, it must be wrong. Look, some people just don't get it because it's not their team. But Farm Bureau Insurance does because everyone needs a home team for insurance. And we are that. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? 
This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not gonna come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Yeah, it's like, I don't really you, you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Where do you come alive? A stadium, lecture hall, a music hall, church potluck? This year, you have a new spot, walkgeorgia.org, a free website that provides you with all the resources needed to get your heart rate up and body out in your community. Sign up and receive individual or group fitness tracking, fitness demos by certified trainers, recipes, and a guide to resources in your Georgia County, all in one easy-to-use site. When you move more, you live more. walkgeorgia.org. We're back to live action here at GHSA Basketball Championships as we begin the fourth quarter of this Class uh, 3A girls game. And just in time for baseball season, Ken Burns presents his latest documentary, Jackie Robinson. It's an enthralling look at the groundbreaking career and civil rights activism of the baseball legend, featuring extensive interviews with his widow, Rachel. See how their love story was the foundation for all of his success. That's coming up Monday, April 11th on GPB. Let's go to Jackie now for a little bit more on this 3A game. Thanks guys, yeah I was in on the Jackson huddle and as you can probably hear, this game is far from over. The girls over there extremely, extremely animated. They are pumped up. Coaches were telling them, whoever is in the corner, be ready to shoot. They're ready to score some points, but also do not forget to rebound. They are rallied and ready to go, guys. Absolutely, what a game we've got here, 49-41. Again, we saw, we've watched a Morgan County lead uh, virtually the entire game, but Jackson pulls within two points there in the third quarter before the 8-0 run by Morgan County broke it back open. So an eight-point game right now. A lot of foul trouble for Jackson we're watching, including that player right there. Given she has four fouls. The turnaround can't go off the back iron. Leaking out is Davis. She puts it up and hits him. What a touch for the left-handed junior. You know, it's awesome because I asked our awesome statistician, I said, you're looking at Takiana's oh. line, 25 points in 22 minutes with six steals. I said, as a statistician, what do you think, Kevin? He said, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> Three-point basket there. Brown off the back iron, falls up for her own miss. That doesn't go. Thomas. Keep the ball if you're Kayla Thomas. You've done a good job as a point guard, just slowing the game down for Jackson Atlanta. Just, just a little bit for people to get their composure. Walker tries a three. That won't go. Brown the rebound. Gets it to Nash. She's trying to leak out, and that's Walker called for the foul. And again, the foul's becoming a problem. Let's check out these last couple of baskets here. Very quick. We saw the leak out here. Great job by Davis to collect and put it in. And on the other end, Walker for three. That was a heat check from the last basket. <laughs> that was, that's right. <laughs> she tried it again a moment ago. Now they were 0 for 11 from three-point range before Walker put that one in. Her first field goal of the game. Back to live action now, and that's Walker. The steal, but she stepped out of bounds. Checking the foul problems. Gibbons has four. Walker for Smith for all for Maynard Jackson High School. Just over a minute gone here in the fourth quarter. That's Davis on the drive. She's been hot. Right back up and in. Bryant can't get it to go in. Gibbons the rebound. Out ahead to Thomas, leaking out. She puts it home. And great hustle there by Jackson. Sticking when, in this game. When I tell you, you see like a mirror of, of a type game, these guards are going at it with each other. Number one and number two versus number one and number two. I've got my Batman and your Robin. <laughs> Nash can't get the three to go. Davis collects the rebound, steps out from three for herself. <laughs> she, she wants this game. Her shoulders are light. Well, she's got the swagger now. Look at her shoulders pinned back. She feels she can't be stopped. Gibbons for three, bounces off, no. Davis the rebound. She's gonna take it herself. Looking down court for her teammate, Nash. Up and can't get that to go, but she's fouled by Smith, and that'll be her fifth 
And she'll come out of the game. Tyranny Smith, tough night for her. Got in foul trouble early. Just got back in the game. Smith, only about 12 minutes of action in this game before she comes out. Tyranny Smith, the junior. Coach talking about how she's really developed as a leader throughout this season, really grown for these Jaguars. So her fifth foul, she comes out again. Keep in mind, two other players. Gibbons and Walker both with four fouls as well. So Nash at the line and she'll shoot a pair. This is the first. It's Joshua Reeves. Third year as a head coach, was an assistant at Morgan County for seven years prior to that before taking over the head coaching job. The role does, is not kind for Nash. So it remains an eight-point game for Morgan County. Mayfield, crowd one of the travel. A lot of Morgan County people here. The boys team plays next in the, their 3A title game. Davis collects, collects the rebound. Doing it all right now for the Bulldogs. Into the corner now for Reed. She tries a three, and it's in. And the Bulldogs back out to an 11-point lead. That energy pill that Tatiana is giving, and now she's going to pass it off to her teammates. Just a great look down to Taja Reed for the easy three in the corner. And, and how about that shot right there? The senior, Brown, giving love to the freshman, Reed, for that ice water three from the corner as the Bulldogs try to win it all for the first time since 1983. They're 516 away as we've got a timeout right now on the court here in Macon. What a job for these Bulldogs. They've just done a great job of just keeping the energy. You know, they, they, they've had their highs and lows, but then you've got somebody like Tatiana Davis who knows no lows. <laughs> Davis, so exciting to watch. Tatiana Davis, again, we talked, Coach talked about when she gets hot, she's unstoppable, and she's been hot throughout this game. 10 points in the first quarter, 10 more in the second quarter. She's got 28 in the game. And she just does a good job of just establishing herself. She is one of those players, she's going north south. You're not going to curve her out to go east west. She's going to continue to attack the basket. Once she gets herself involved, let's go ahead and and pass the pill out. Let's get our freshmen involved. Let's get Pumpkin involved. Let's get everybody involved. Trying to mess around and get a triple-double. <laughs> Tatiana Davis right there. You can see her numbers. In the steals bracket. Too. That's exactly. Morgan County, four threes in the second half and only three in the first half. They've gotten hot from outside and back out to an 11-point balls right now. Inbound to Walker. And the turnover. Still a lot of time left right now, but Jackson, again, got to find their composure and avoid fouls. But two key players already, one starter already fouling out, and Smith. Brown gets over to Nash. Oh, traveling call right there. Coach Reed trying to plead his case, and then Nash went to one knee, but still had her pivot foot with the other foot. One more look at this. That's one of those tricky plays. Yeah, left foot stayed there. Uh, tough call, tough break for the Bulldogs. Foul on the other end, and that's if it's on Fortune, that's her fifth. And it is. She will come out of the game. Selena Fortune. With Kayla Thomas making things happen. So Fortune comes out of the game. Tough break for her because she, she she had a really good presence on the inside, both on the offensive end and defensive end. And she's a little more active than Bryant down there. That's why she's been in the game. And just did a good job of adjusting some shots. She never, you know, she didn't really get too many block shots in that game, but just did a great job of adjusting shots from the guards of Jackson Atlanta. Thomas trying to hit the second, making a nine-point deficit, and she does. Thomas now with nine points in the game and a full court press again by Jackson Atlanta. Gets it to Reed, the freshman, quickly across the court. Nice job there. Nash taking it all the way in. That's too hard off the glass. Thomas the rebound. 
Here comes Jackson, putting ahead to White. That won't go. Turner in the game. Back to Thomas. Bowls her way in. Too hard. Davis comes away. Fast break for Davis. Loses the dribble. Back out to Pumpkin Brown. To Nash. Stripped away. Jackson has the ball. Walker. Nice oh, crossover. Heat Steps check. out for a three. Not really what you want, especially in a situation where you need a basket. You've done everything you can do. Attacking the basket really hard, missing layups. You don't want to take a step back. I think that's exactly what Coach yeah. is talking about. Coach Powell, look at her face. Well, you had a wide open 10-footer. Why step back and try the three and allow your defense to block the shot? Jackson struggling. They have missed 14 of their last 16 shots. And again, down nine right now as we approach the halfway point here in the fourth quarter. That's a 15-footer there by Pumpkin Brown. 11-point lead now for Morgan County. Get your hand up when you go into the basket. So you have your eyes on the target and make it easy for you. White loses the ball. Jackson looks kind of gassed right now. Brown tries for a three. No. Reed there for the putback. I wonder if she's going to turn with a shot or an assist. And the biggest lead of the game right now for Morgan County. And that calls a timeout from Jackson. 61 to 48. And it feels like all of Morgan County is in the house. The girls. Closing out on a title. The boys team coming up next. They will take on Jenkins County and trying for a 3A title as well. 12-2 Morgan run right here, Keisha. Well, I mean, it's just been a good job. Now Tatiana's taking on the role of just distributing, continuing to give that energy out. Pumpkin, even though Pumpkin missed a shot, although I think that was an assist, you've got her <laughs> teammate right there to lay it in for an easy two on an offensive rebound. We you take a look at this matchup right now. Again, a 12-2 run for Morgan County. Both these teams dominating in region play, undefeated in region, and the long win streak continuing in the playoffs here in the run. Coach Powell of Jackson told her team, no okie dokes the rest of the way. These are all champions in Morgan County, proving everything that Jackson would want and then some. Oh, turn the ball over right here. Good job by the defense, little rare full court press by Morgan County, and it pays off for them. They get the ball back. Yeah, I mean, you know, and Coach Powell just alluded to him that being a champion is not easy. Not at all. How about that play by your senior, Pumpkin Brown? That shot wasn't easy. She went through two defenders and got held on her shooting hand. She finished up strong with that, just splitting two defenders, taking the contact, going up strong and finishing with the right. That's Mayfield with the foul. That's her first. Trying to finish the three-point play, and she does. 64-48 now. Morgan County on a major run. Gibbons can't get it to go. Arnold with the follow when she puts it in. You gotta open the basket back up for Jackson Atlanta. To the three-minute mark now. Davis, monster game for her. She knows the clock right now. The clock so is important. your friend, yep. yes. Goes in, picks up the foul. I think that's on Mayfield. And it is. Mayfield with her second foul. And Davis to the line. 28.9 already. I'd say better than advertised. We knew she was a great player, but coach said super athletic. She's fun to watch. Right, and, she, and, and like I said before, she does it in, in so many facets of the game. You know, a, a lot of times players want to score. They want to score on their own. But she's able to score with the ball in her hand, left or right. She's able to do it by getting down the court and having her teammates find her. So she can also do it with all, off the ball. That's what really makes you a savvy type of guard when you're able to score off the ball. 30-point game for Tatiana Davis, the junior, and now a 16-point lead for Morgan County. Desperation time for Jackson. Walker can't get that to go, but back up and in with the follow is Erica Gibbons, and she has a chance for a three-point play. And they try to, again, to cut into this deficit with 2.45 left, and the clock stopped. You know, and I'm looking at Kayla Davis, right, or Kayla Thomas right now, as she's telling her, her teammates, you know, just supporting Gibbons that she's on a free throw line. You just got to keep going. You have to keep going. Talia Adams with uh, the foul. Shot is missed. The uh, free throw is missed. That was Thomas with the putback. She couldn't get that to go. Davis 
padding her totals, totals again. The two star guards, Brown and the assist to Davis. 32 points for Tatiana Davis. Tatiana Davis. If you didn't know her name before this game, you know it now. That's right. One of the great games in the weekend of the tournament. She has been dominant. 2.22 to go. Once again, here it is. Look at Pumpkin, the great vision. She saw it right there. Waited. How many times have they done that in their careers? I'm sure a lot, especially this <laughs> year. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not often where you, you find a group of players, especially two guards, that understand the game and play the game very well. And a frustration foul right there by Kamisha Walker, her fifth foul, and she comes out of the game. Finishes with six points. His frustration. Back-to-back 30-point -back games here in this tournament. We saw Colby Simmons for St. Francis had 31 in the last game as they fell to Green Forest. That was amazing to watch him play, for sure. He was amazing. Had star guard, 6'5 guard headed to Arizona next year. 31 points for him in 30 minutes. And here, Tatiana Davis, the junior, 32 points. Ball nearly lost out of bounds. Good save there. Good defense. Arnold gets the loose ball. Back up, no. Mayfield, no. Mayfield again. Taken away by Nash. Just ripped it away from her. To Davis, to Reed, and she can't handle it. Morgan County is really enjoying themselves right now. <laughs> they don't mind the mistakes if it's aggressive. Even the coach said, hey, losing builds character better than winning. The long win streak. What a week for this Morgan County team. You see Coach Reed there. Coach Reeves. He definitely said it. He said, I, I would rather lose early and learn from everything to be able to get to this championship game and win it all. Steal by Brown. Good defense there by White to deny Davis. Jackson comes back the other way. Oh, and the rejection by Brown. And she's called for the foul. And it'll be White shooting a pair. Second foul on Pumpkin Brown. Mentioned at the top, you may remember that name, Morgan County. Her brother, Tukey, the Class 3A Player of the Year. Last three years, 2013, 14, and 15. He's Morgan County's all-time leading scorer. Maybe Sis trying to get a championship here as a senior. Reed comes out of the game as Browser is back in for the Bulldogs. She did a great job off the bench today, Reed. Just outstanding. Free throw, no good. Rebound. Chased down by Gibbons. That three-pointer, no. Mayfield the rebound. Stops and shoots, and that's no good. Gibbons with the follow back up and in. And a quick timeout, 23 points now for Gibbons. At the 125 mark, 14-point lead for Morgan County. And Jackson, time running out for the Jackson High School out of Atlanta. Coming up next is the boys' 3A title game. The same Morgan County versus the Jenkins County Warriors, and that should be a great game as well. John Nelson and Sean Golden on the call for that one. That's the fourth game, and still two more to go. This is the longest of the three days. It's going like, to be a good day, it, though. It is, though. I don't know. <laughs> I spend my Sundays after this weekend sipping a lot of hot tea. <laughs> right. I, I've got a bunch of Ricola. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> mint in my pocket That's as we right. speak. Looking at the Morgan County fans right there, and they talked about their coach, Joshua Reeves. And again, what a week. Baby Boy was born on Tuesday and credited his coaching staff for really getting uh, the team prepared. He said the team came back. He missed a couple days, of course, being doing new daddy duties with his wife and his family and said the girls were texting saying what great practices they had. And he said, well, you've got girls that are, you know, they're talented and they're locked in and they're committed. And you get coaches that are also dedicated and talented. You can step away and not lose anything. And trying for their 25th win, he said, well, how great would it be if we could say I had a baby boy and won a state championship in the same week? And you get a standing ovation here now for Pumpkin Brown as she comes out of the game. What a career. You know, it's one of those things, and I know you mentioned it as we talked to Coach Reeves. Oh, so you haven't lost since November 28th. And 
He didn't want to jinx it at all. He said, I'm not saying a thing. <laughs> <laughs> They haven't lost since November 28. That, that's just an outstanding streak to have and, and win it out on top. And he knew that was something good. He knew to learn their lessons as another, going to be see Tatiana Davis, the other star player coming out as they're getting their due. Davis, 10 points in the first quarter, one in the second. She had 21 points in the second half, 12 in the third and nine more in the fourth. As some of the reserve players now in the game at the one minute mark as Morgan County ready to celebrate. Talking about, again, this uh, Morgan County team and what they did coming back from those losses. They beat Laney and then beat Buford, both number one in their respective classes, and back-to-back -back nights after coming back from Ohio, and he knew then this team had gotten the message and were committed. Still here by White. Well, the other way now for Jackson. She gets that to go, and a quick timeout now by the Jaguars. Jackson, Atlanta. Only one loss to a team out of Washington, D.C. back at Thanksgiving, 30 and 1 on the season. And they're up against a buzzsaw here in Morgan County and Tatiana Davis. As we remain a busy day here on GPB. Now keep in mind this Sunday night, tomorrow night, join the GPB as we bid farewell to our friends at Downton Abbey after six wonderful seasons with a special live event surrounding the series finale. It all starts Sunday night on GPB. My wife's a big fan of this show. She has been in mourning all season, hates to see it go away. <laughs> she better tune in. I told her, yeah. I said, Mercy Street's good. Go watch Mercy Street this season. That's a good show on GPB. A lot of good programming on GPB. Final seconds now. Morgan County breaking the press. Not quite. That's a steal by Mayfield. She goes down trying to get a bucket, and she does. Makes it a 10-point game with 27.5. And a quick timeout for the Jaguars. Number one, Gibbons right there. Team high, 23 points. She's been outstanding. Nine here in the second half and doing it here in the fourth quarter despite having four fouls throughout the quarter. I mean, she, she had a great game despite the, the foul trouble, you know. You have to learn how, I think this is a great learning process for her, especially going into the next phase of her basketball career at Alabama State. You have to learn how to play through frustration and understand that just because you're in that moment, you don't have to stay in that moment. you got to play through the frustration. She had a great game today, 23 points, 15 rebounds. She's got her double-double. Now it's being able to play through that frustration and continue on the path to be successful for her team. And Morgan Walker the ball now over to Sarah Couch, the junior. Looking inside, and oh, stepped out of bounds. It was Kaylee Anderson. Couldn't quite control that pass, a 12.5 to go. The Morgan County bench gets ready. The final 11 seconds here. Three-pointer there by Erica Gibbons as she closes out her career. And it's the Morgan County Bulldogs. State champions for the first time since 1983. What a remarkable week we say for Coach Joshua Reeves, but even more so for the players of Morgan County. They have tried and tried and tried. They've gone through the process of losing and learning, and now to have this opportunity, not having lost since November 28th, to come out on top. Congratulations to the new Class 3A state champions, Morgan County Bulldogs. Well, and what a job again for this Morgan County team. We talked about the seniors they lose. Brown, 11 points. Nash is a senior. She goes out a champion. Nash with eight points in this game. Talia Adams, a senior. Bryant, a senior. Starters, but you look at Santaji Reed, the freshman. She had 10 points in this game. Tatiana Davis coming back, 32 points for her. And uh, the colleges who hadn't noticed her so far, they will now start calling after this night. Just an outstanding performance by Davis and the Morgan County Bulldogs. 25 game win streak to close out the season, 28 and 3 in the Class 3A state champions. <laughs> and you think about it, a lot of these girls when they were freshmen, I, I want to say when we were talking to coach, it was Selena Fortune and Jeteria White, like they didn't even play basketball. <laughs> if I'm exactly. general, they didn't play basketball, but having an opportunity you know, to do that and to share that with an extended family. He's got his son right there in his arms. It's just a, it's a great 
a testament to who Coach Reeves is as a coach and how he's able to instill in these players the opportunity to play the game of basketball. Well, veteran coach, he's done a great job. Hats off, by the way, to Coach Powell and uh, the Maynard Jackson uh, High School. Jaguars, what a season. You coming in, had never won a playoff game before this year. 0-8 all time in the postseason. And what a great run. They ran through the gauntlet and got here 30-1. And, and uh, they are champions in their own right as they finish 30-2. and But again, the spoils today go to Morgan County and the Bulldogs. And Coach Reeve, his wish comes true. He will be able to say the rest of his life, remember the week when we had the baby boy was born on Tuesday and the state championship was won on Saturday for the Bulldogs, their first since 1983. And again, these seniors, like you said, what a great testament when you get a group of young ladies as freshmen not knowing what the future is, losing, getting beat up every week, but they stayed with it, came together. And even this week in Ohio, this season in Ohio, coming through those big losses in that hotel room, deciding we want to just be one of those teams that goes through the motions or do we want to be an elite team? They answer the bell, have not lost since, and now a state championship. Uh, and and that's, that's just a great thing. You know, a lot of times coaches can come in and, you know, they're throwing down the gauntlet at the players, but it, it was just a simple and casual conversation. Is it how do we want to be? What do we want to do? Absolutely. Well, they want to win a state championship, and they have done that. Let's go to Mark Harmon right now for the presentation. Mark, take it away. Thank you, Larry. Time now for the trophy presentation for the girls 3A state championship, Morgan County winning it. And for that, we turn the microphone over to the executive director of the GHSA, Gary Phillips. Thank you, Mark. Coach, as we understand it, this is the second girls championships and the other one came in 1983, I believe, is what our research shows. So it's a great show, great season. Here's Mr. Stapleton to present you with the uh, championship trophy. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Joy Reform Bureau and all of our agents uh, in every county in the state, we want to wish you a congratulations to a great season and a great state championship. Thank you very much. Hey, Coach, congratulations. You have had one whale of a week, a new sun early in the week, and a state championship on Saturday. Yes, sir. It's, it's been a busy week. Without the sun, it would have been real busy, but yes, that, that made it a little bit harder for us. But our girls worked hard all week. They came in and responded. We have a great coaching staff that was ready to step in and, and run practice and do what we need to do to get here. So real proud of everybody involved in our organization. All right, stand right by there. Sydney, you're one of the seniors on this team. Talk about what this means to you to win this state championship in your senior go around. Uh, I think it's very important because this group of girls have been together for so long, and we could have been here multiple times, but this year we finally pulled it through and got it done. So, How about your fans out there? I mean, this place is dressed in red, and they're loud. We love them. All right, Pumpkin, come over here. Pumpkin's over here. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Where's number four there? Pumpkin, you're right here. Talk a little about winning this one in your senior season. It's amazing. Like, I wouldn't want to trade either of them. And first giving glory to God, if it weren't for him, we wouldn't be here. So it feels amazing. Talk about the journey. Did you guys think you had something special going when you started practice way back in the fall? Oh, yeah. Man, in the beginning of the year, we lost three games. And then after that three games, we realized we couldn't lose no more. So we worked really hard to get here. All right. Where's the coach? One final time. I know the entire community, Madison, Georgia, you're all fired up. And you got the boys game coming up next. Yeah, that's right. We have the best fans in the world. Thank you all so much. And our boys are about to come in and take care of it right now. Uh, well, congratulations to Morgan County's girls team, the Class 3A state champs. They won in 1983. They are the champs in 2016. And we'll be back with the JPB tailgate party right after this timeout.